thanks, Brian. That's a little surprising. Um, still, it's a big pleasure to be here, even a little earlier than I had anticipated. Um, on behalf of KBR, I'd also like to thank the organizer of GBC for the opportunity they provided to us to be here and present today to you, distinguished audience, and specifically also, um, I would like to just thank uh, the translator here in the translation booth. I think they're doing an excellent job, so thank you. You're really helping me out on all these uh, Russian translation, uh, translation into English here. So I will going to, I'm going to talk today about score technology. And uh, so initially we had planned that Mark does his presentation first, and uh, I do it second. So we'll do it vice versa. And I'll just take one slide that he has in his slide deck and take it away from him so he doesn't have to talk about that. Um, so we have, uh, we're one of the leading licensors in steam cracking. Our technology is called SCORE, and it's a leading technology for high selectivity and optimal recovery ethylene production. I will give you a short introduction and then uh, keep that really short, talk about the selective cracking furnaces and the features and advantages we see in these technologies and uh, also try to find a good portion of time for a case study that I think could be interested for some operators here in Russia and I'll tell you later why we do think so. So SCORE is an acronym for Selective Cracking Optimum Recovery Technology. It's a joint technology of KBR and ExxonMobil and uh, since 1998 we've been collaborating on this technology. On this slide you do see different cracking coils that we offer to the market. We can call them SC1, SC2, and SC4. So SC1 being the one pass, single pass coil, SC2 being the U-tube, and SC4 being the more conventional W-tube coil. And really the one pass, the SC1 coil being uh, a, a unique offering of KBR and ExxonMobil to the market with a very short residence time and some advantages that are derived from that short residence time, and I'll talk about that. Now, when we talk about SCORE technology and recent experience, while we have been uh, providing this technology and realizing this technology for more than 60 years, uh, in the recent years since 2005, we have more than 26 projects realized based on this technology as KBR license and uh, different configurations. Obviously, KBR not only being a licensor, but also being an EPC, EP contractor. So you can see here that about half or a little less than half of these projects have been with KBR and EP, EPC function and about you know, a little more than half being as a license and engineering type, so as a pure technology provider. These projects had different sizes from rather small plants, uh, about 400 KDA as for example in the USCOR project in Uzbekistan that started up just a couple years ago up to the most recently announced 1.8 million tons uh, projects by ExxonMobil and SABIC U.S. Gulf Coast uh, on a single train capacity with feedstocks ranging from pure ethane to NAPTA, very heavy feedstock and all sort of mixed feedstock situation and in all regions of the world. Now, the SCORE technology, and you can see a simple sketch here on the right side of this slide, has some very unique features and one of the most important features that we do see is that it has the same compact furnace design for all feedstocks that is shown here. So you see here as it's shown um, on the right hand side for an SC1 type coil, so a single pass coil, it has eight passes in the radiant box arranged in two furnace uh, tube rows and on each side of the uh, tube rows you have uh, two, uh, one furnace row, so in total you have, uh, sorry, burner rows. So in total you have four burner rows, so you have a hundred percent floor fire design um, you have a centrally mounted convection section and on top uh, of the radiant uh, section you have also directly connected to the radiant coils a double pipe primary quench exchanger and this is a very important feature as well because it allows for continuous operation without the requirement of mechanical cleaning some, like some of the uh, competitors design so it provides for advantages in terms of uh, reliability of the plant. Now, while this here is shown on the right-hand side for an SC1, the same principal furnace box design is also used for SC2 or SC4, so for the U-tube and the W uh, or conventional uh, tube, where in this design the feedstock is added to the top of the radiant section instead of being fed from the bottom of the box. 
Some of the advantages, and here uh, we list as a first probably the most, uh, the biggest advantage that we carry to the market and that we think is important is that this SC1 design has uh, the highest ethylene yields of all ethylene technologies in the market, and with it, it has a maximum olefin selectivity for all feedstocks and at any severity. Now, for ethane cracking, the ethylene yield is about 3 to 4% higher compared to W calls, whereas for liquid feedstock, so for heavier feedstock, this advantage is even a lot bigger. So we're talking about 6 to 8% higher ethylene yield at the uh, same conversion uh, compared to U coils and 10% higher relative butadiene yield. Obviously, that brings a number of advantages. Now, one advantage that is not specifically listed here, but which is very important, is that this coil allows um, to go to a very high conversion, very high severity operation without losing substantial ethylene yield and ethylene selectivity. So this, again, allows you to produce more ethylene with a single uh, through, pass through to the radiant section, and whether that brings opportunities that you don't, simply don't have with other furnace technology. One of the opportunities, and that's written down here on this slide, is that you can also use it to debottleneck recovery train through the application of this technology, as with higher yields, with higher conversion, you are able to reduce the load on the entire recovery train. On a new plant, that means less capex, and in a revamp, that means less load and really de bottlenecking of the recovery train. With that comes also less energy consumption, less dilution steam consumption, and so a more efficient operation. Furthermore, um, and on this slide on the right-hand side, again, you see a simple sketch of a score furnace, uh, the single cabin firebox here shown um, in comparison with a twin cell that is applied by some of our competitors. And you can see that the score furnace box has just less width. So you have less plot space, or in other words, with score technology, you achieve the highest ethylene capacity for any given plot space. Specifically, also, if you go to very large furnace box design, very large capacity plants. Um, which also allows uh, to replace multiple small furnaces with fewer larger furnaces, then returns with less equipment and lower maintenance cost. Furthermore, with the eight passes that I have previously mentioned, and they are shown here in a sketch uh, as, as eight boxes in the single cabin fire box, we have the opportunity to actually use these eight individually uh, flow control passes, more or less as mini furnace inside one single cabin firebox. So we are able to feed them with different feedstocks, and this provides for a very high feed flexibility um, where we can actually operate each of these passes with different feeds at the optimum cracking conditions and therefore achieve the optimum yields. Now, the term that we use for this operation uh, and for this flexibility is hybrid cracking. And I will talk about this also later when I talk about the case study. Uh, one of the advantages, for example, that's listed here is that we don't need separate ethane recycle uh, furnaces. We can process the ethane recycle in the same furnace box as the fresh feed in case of a NAPTA cracker or LPJ cracker or what you will. The number of feedstocks we can feed to the furnace box is only limited by the piping arrangement that is uh, in the feed, on the feed side to the furnace. With that, I would like to come. Oops, sorry. I would like to come to the to the case study. And um, as I mentioned before, we have selected this case study because we think it could be interesting for some of the companies, and you know, could be a good example of, of you know what what some companies are facing as challenges um, in terms of ethylene producers here in Russia. And this case is for a um, NAPTA cracker in Korea, um, and uh, it's a, a case where a, a company was facing a situation where they had a rather small plant, uh, a plant which has, um, less than, had less than 500 kDa ethylene uh, uh, capacity. Um, and the challenge that the, this customer was facing, that the competition had much larger plants and more modern plant uh, designs. And so they were competing with superior plants, superior technology, larger plants. So the objective of the revamp was a capacity expansion, 
um, expansion to by more than 60 percent so a substantial substantial increase of the overall capacity to make the unit more competitive with that to make the unit more energy efficient uh, reduce the specific energy consumption uh, with that to do that at minimum capex obviously but also uh, to increase the reliability and what is very important to do all of this with a minimum shutdown with the target um, that they had to do it in less than 45 days. So we did an extensive uh, feasibility study on this plant, uh, on the revamp options and the modifications and then realized the project. And the key uh, revamp elements are listed here. The key elements are the addition of two new score furnace with hyper cracking capabilities. Um, and uh, an energy efficient design that is reducing the specific energy consumption by about 50%. Um, there were some very innovative and key uh, solutions that were developed to reduce uh, the dis dis distillation section scope and capex cost and also with the compression section. Obviously, this is very key in expansions, revamps. We had a very um, intensive collaboration with the vendors uh, with the compressor vendors to determine the best revamp option for the major machinery in the plant. I will talk about some of these elements more in detail on the next couple of slides. So this slide shows the original, simplified original configuration in this plant. And um, you can see here it was nine furnaces um, on Napta feedstock, eight furnaces and one for recycled ethane with a gas turbine integration where gas turbine exhaust was fed to eight of these furnaces, um, a gasoline fractionator existing in a quench tower, and then the gas being fed to the crack gas compressor. Now in the revamp, as I said, there were two newer score furnaces added with the hyper cracking capabilities. So that means that both of these furnaces are capable of taking in naphtha as well as the recycled ethane in the same furnace. And with that, we were able to design the revamp without need of any modification on the ethane recycle furnace or addition of an additional ethane recycle furnace. So that's a very important feature. Um, furthermore, there were flexibility to add additional feedstock, C3 LPG if necessary, uh, new gas turbine where the gas turbine exhaust was fed also not only to the firebox of the new furnaces but also to one of the existing furnaces making the plant more efficient. The existing gasoline fractionator was actually sufficient in size and diameter and could, be, uh, could carry the larger hydraulic load with just the replacement of uh, trays in the top section with packings and for the quench tower a parallel new quench tower had to be installed. On the crack gas compressor, um, there were several options that have, have been studied in detail. And the two main options that were studied was a booster compressor versus a completely new compressor on the existing foundations. And ultimately, it was decided to install a new compressor uh, because that had a very significantly higher energy efficiency as compared to the other option. For the caustic wash, also there were several options that were studied. Um, and ultimately it was decided to install a new caustic tower because it had easier and safer operation than the parallel tower that has been studied as an option. Um, Trier feed wash tower was retrayed and the dryer actually was very interesting. We had also a very intensive collaboration with the vendor. The existing dryer capacity was sufficient but still it was decided to add a new dryer as a spare to improve the reliability of the dryer operation. This slide now shows the um, fractionation towers, a simplified sketch, and it looks confusing a little bit, a lot of you know, s simple tower symbols on one slide. I'll just take you through it very briefly. So you have the deethanizer tower on the, uh, the overhead of the deethanizer goes into the back end acetylene reactor and the green oil absorber to separate the green oil produced in the acetylene reactor and then the overhead of the green oil absorber goes into the ethylene fractionator and produces the ethylene product. The deethanizer bottoms goes into the depropanizer system. 
the propanizer overhead goes into the MAPD reactor and the, from there also in the C3 green oil tower to remove the C3 green oil produced in the MAPD reactor and then the C green oil tower overhead going into the propylene fractionator to uh, produce the polymer grade propylene product. The propanizer bottoms goes into the debutanizer and then is separated into mixed C4 and C5 plus fraction. Now as you can imagine, if you do such a substantial capacity expansion, distillation tower revamp is a challenge. And it was very intensively studied. And one of the key solution that was implemented here is shown uh, with all of the other measures in, these, uh, in this section of the plant. Now, instead of replacing towers, uh, adding new parallel towers, um, actually, the key solution that was implemented here was to install a new deethanizer, but redu um, reuse the existing old deethanizer as a depropanizer prefractionator. With that measure, actually, we were able to unload the depropanizer section to the point where only retraining and partial retraining was necessary in the depropanizer section instead of building new towers. So that was a very substantial measure. Um, the, um, on the ethylene fractionator as well as on the propylene fractionator, obviously the hydraulic challenge was substantial as well as a lot more product was produced. And here in both cases, rectifier columns were installed um, upstream of the fractionator to unload the actual, um, actual ethylene and uh, propylene fractionation columns. So with these key measures, actually it was possible to minimize the uh, modernization, the revamp needs in the existing fractionation section and to carry this substantially higher hydraulic load through the plant and produce the products. Both um, acetylene and MHPD reactor had to be replaced with new uh, reactor systems with a larger capacity. So with that being said, I would like to briefly come to the summary um, of my presentation. And uh, so I talked about SCORE technology license, a joint technology of KBR and ExxonMobil licensed by KBR, which has a low capital cost, high profitability, high flexibility, and operability and reliability. And I've shown you a case study, shown you what can be done in existing plants by revamping existing facilities with a 60% plus capacity expansion on an existing NAPTA cracker um, and by addition of two new score furnaces in this case with hybrid cracking capabilities and with a minimum capex and a 50% increase energy efficiency. If you have any questions, please feel free to come up to me after the presentation or ask later in the question and answer session. And also, if you don't catch me around, you have my email e address here to ask any questions as a follow-up to the conference. Thank you very much for your attention.